Hi, welcome and thanks for tuning in this evening for our concert. If you're not a subscriber to this channel and you enjoy the music, you can hit the button down there in the right corner and uh, you can be notified about upcoming concerts as we post videos. If you'd be interested in supporting us in a financial way, you can check out our Seize the Score Patreon channel. That information is in the description below. And there's all kinds of fun benefits to being a subscriber, including, as you'll hear on this concert, opportunities to request specific pieces that we will then perform. So enjoy the music. Let's get to it. The first piece in our program this evening is the Violin Sonata by Felix Mendelssohn. And it's unusual to have a work by such a well-known composer that is relatively unknown, this uh, F major sonata. So Mendelssohn had already written two sonatas for violin and piano when he was younger, um, and neither one of those made it to publication. And then he wrote this sonata in 1838 as his career was really taking off. Um, he was having great success as a conductor, um, and he was really maturing in his compositional style. And he set to work on this violin sonata in 1838 and then finished it, um, but was unhappy with it and put it aside and actually never presented it for publication. Yeah, and as we've been looking into it, so there is the first um, version that scholars have uh, found in manuscript. There is the second version that David mentioned that he began working on, uh, but never completed. And then there is a published uh, version that Yehudi Menuhin um, put out in the 1950s, I think. 50s sound right? That sounds right, yeah. yeah. Um, and Menuhin took some things from the second version that he put into the first. He also made some changes of his own. So you have three different versions from which, we, uh, from which we've a little bit made our own version, although we've mostly stuck to... Mendelssohn's, Mendelssohn's original. Right, so we really are playing the 1838 version, which was his original manuscript for the piece and his original thoughts for the piece. Um, and since that's the only complete version he made, I think it, it hangs together quite well on the whole. Um, it's an excellent piece of music, and the little changes that we have made um, have really just been to make things work a little better on the instruments, I think, and make, yeah. a, make a couple of moments work a little bit better by our, by our lights, at least. Mm -hmm. It's a three-movement work, um, kind of a typical fast, slow fast. Um, the second movement in particular is, is just lovely, and it reminds me a lot, since I just played a few months ago the String Quartet Opus 13, it reminds me of that opening. It has a similar kind of feel, um, and that tune uh, is also in A major, just like this slow movement is. The other movements are very typical of Mendelssohn's writing. You can always, in the background, or at least I can as I'm playing these piano parts, you can hear his orchestral writing. It just, it, it just comes through. If you know the Mendelssohn symphonies, you hear gestures, you hear textures, you hear all kinds of things that just that say, ah, Mendelssohn's writing a symphony. Yeah. Uh, and it really works very well. The last one that reminds me of the violin concerto, in a sense, I think it's just all the fast 16th notes in the violin part, but there is right. there's something about the energy of that that's very similar to the finale of the violin concerto. So this is Mendelssohn's Violin Sonata in F.
So the next piece on the program is actually a request from one of our supporters on Patreon. This is the Bel Shem Suite for violin and piano. And the second movement, the Nigun, is by far the best known and most performed um, of the set. Uh, this is really just 
over the top emotional writing. It's it's really fun to play. Yeah. So the composer Ernst Bloch, um, who was American but then ended up Swiss. Um, calls these scenes of Hasidic life, as I recall. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's really channeling um, the sounds of that music. And uh, he dedicates them to his mother. Um, and I think it's a, a real tribute to his own heritage. Um, let's see, the first one, I'm trying to even remember. Contrition? Contrition, thank you. Yeah. Um, and then the second one, the Nigun, is an improvisation, and, and that is quite well known. The last one is uh, Simchas Torah, which is rejoicing. Which is rejoicing, yeah. yeah. I grew up listening to um, recordings of these pieces by, well, by many violins, but particularly by Heifetz and then um, Itzhak Perlman, who played them so, so beautifully. So it's a little bit of nostalgia and a lot of fun. And wonderful, wonderful music, actually. It's so much fun to play.
So the final work on our program is The Violin Sonata by Marion Bauer. And this is a piece that I don't think either of us uh, knew anything about. Right. So Marion Bauer was Chaz's discovery for our last program, this right, piece the called Up, Up the Oklahoma. Right. And we both liked the piece very much and wanted to look more deeply. And this is a is this called a fantasy quasi sonata or something like that? Mm -hmm. Is it a sonata quasi a fantasy? And it's in three movements, uh, written in 1925 by Marion Bauer. And Marion Bauer was born in Walla Walla, Washington. Um, she was she's uh, it's it's actually amazing that she's not better known, considering that there's a lot of significant. Um, achievements that in her life, including eventually being on the faculty at Juilliard. Right. She's clearly a very successful figure in her own time. Um, she wrote quite a lot of music. She was published. Um, her music was written for important performers. This, this uh, sonata is dedicated to um, a Finnish-born American pianist named Karen Dias, who we didn't know anything about and looked into her. And this woman gave the American premiere of the Ferruccio Buzzoni Piano Concerto, which just amazed me. To, with to with Fritz Reiner, no less. Right, Fritz Reiner in what, Cincinnati? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, an, amazing, an amazing thing to think about that. This is absolutely top of the top in terms of uh, American performance in the time. Yeah, and uh, this is a piece that really has just a, a kaleidoscope of, of, of colors. It's, it's impressionistic at times. It's very melodic at times. Um, it can get a little bit thorny. Yeah, her it's... harmonic language is quite original. I, mm -hmm. To me, it really sounds a lot like where the composer Charles Griffiths was at the end of his life, which was just a mm -hmm. few years earlier than this. Um, and if any listeners are familiar with Griffiths' piano sonata, um, that's the kind of exploratory language that, uh, that Marion Bauer seems to be working with. Um, and it's, it's quite phenomenal. The second movement just has this, this great kind of stormy uh, sound to it. And, and really, you'll hear the harmonic language is, is not your common practice tonality, but it's very attractive and very effective. Yeah. It's, been a, it's been really fabulous getting to know it, and we hope that you enjoy it also. Thank you. 